So the first chapter, the first part is called uh, Joyful Krishna. So we get the uh, imagery of dark clouds gathering and uh, Radha is given the charge to walk Krishna back home. So the darkness is spreading and uh, this kind of represents uncertainty. Clouds thick in the sky, tamala trees dark in the forest, the night frightens him. As the darkness spreads, we should not forget that there is uh, attractive aspects of the world, they still exist. Among them, uh, among these attractive aspects of the world is poetry. With its uh, controlled speech, based on meters, patterns, uh, there's a certainty that emerges from uncertainty. So poetry allows a person to see the world differently because of its beauty and because of its structure and because of where it leads so by changing perspectives a person can overcome uncertainty Jayadeva, wandering king of bards who sang at Padmavati's lotus feet was obsessed in his heart by rhythms of the goddess of speech and he made this lyrical poem from tales of the passionate play when Krishna loved Sri. The best poems are the ones showing Krishna's love for Radha composed by Jayadev. This is uh, an insertion of the poet praising his own work, giving the work itself a glow of enchantment, a sort of uh, preciousness to the work itself by its praise from the author so we can know what or we're holding what we have in our hands, what we're listening to, that we should have reverence for what is best, for what is uh, good, and for what uh, draws us to perfection. So the goal is to make the world one in which love is forever present, because love overcomes fear and anger. So if attractive things can enrich us, if these things make us better than who we are, and if seduction is the means where our curiosity is drawn in, and if we are transformed to love instead of having fear and anger, then we should know that these are manifestations or the, uh, they are the presence of Krishna himself. This transformation by love what is, to what is best. If remembering Hari enriches your heart, if his arts of seduction arouse you, listen to Jayadev's speech in these sweet, soft lyrical songs. So, as darkness is spreading, it has done so in the past and Krishna has always incarnated into the world to counter this fear and anxiety with truth, with beauty, with certainty, with duty, with piety. The sun's jewel's light encircles you as you break through the bond of existence. You defeat the venomous serpent Kaliya exciting your Yadu kinsmen like sunlight inciting lotuses to bloom. Triumph, God of Triumph, Hari. The incarnations are called Avtar. They are the following. So we have uh, Matsya, the, the isolating fish. Kurma, the detached turtle. Varaha, the enduring boar. Narasimha, the just lion. Vamana, the calculating dwarf, Parashurama, the avenging axeman, Ram, the dutiful prince, Balarama, the hedonistic plowman, Buddha, 
the compassionate guide, and Kalki, the final adjuster, the one who was to come. Listen to the perfect invocation of Bo Jayadev, joyously invoking the essence of existence. You take the tenfold cosmic form, Krishna, triumph, Hari, Lord of the world. So each of these incarnations should be contemplated on because they remind us of the inevitable triumph of Krishna's mission. For upholding the Vedas, for supporting the earth, for raising the world, for tearing the demon asunder, for cheating Bali, for destroying the warrior class, for conquering Ravana, wielding the plow, for spreading compassion, for routing the barbarians. Homage to you, Krishna, in your ten incarnate forms. The purpose of the enumeration of the incarnations demonstrates that this poem of Jayadev's, how Krishna's attraction and seduction are means to attain the truth and certainty in this age of darkness, in this uh, Kali Yuga, is fundamental. The idea of incarnating the divine into creation is very important in, in this understanding of this text. As Krishna has been triumphant in the past, so he shall be again. So there's an idea of hope that Krishna will return and restore the world through his presence of glory and beauty and love. So even though he takes action to be triumphant against those who do great harm in society, he still remains beautiful. He's not tarnished by this action that he takes against the evildoers. His necessary acts of violence do not reduce his claim to attraction and seduction. This is the idea here that, uh, given in examples of Ram, previous, a previous incarnation of the Divine, Ram fought against demons, but he was also very gentle and delicate with his wife Sita. There's no, it doesn't deny, one doesn't deny the other. He can remain beautiful and loving even though he takes action against evil. So, even though Krishna is loving, he is also firm. Though he participates in aggressive actions, he still shows kindness and gentleness. Though he confronts injustice and uncertainty, he remains loving and of good humor. Watching with long omniscient lotus petal eyes, you free us from bonds of existence, preserving life in the world's three realms. Triumph, God of Triumph, Hari, Janaka's daughter Sita adorns you. You conquered demon Dushana. You killed ten-headed Ravana in battle. Triumph, God of Triumph. Hari. Just as the presence of spring returns to Radha's heart, having removed her fear and uncertainty of the darkness, the poem goes on to say that she recalls what her friend confessed about love by experiencing those observations herself. Arada now sees Krishna's presence in every aspect of attractiveness. When spring came, tender-limbed Arada wandered like a flowering creeper in the forest wilderness, seeking Krishna in his many haunts. The god of love increased her ordeal, tormenting her with fevered thoughts, and her friends sang to heighten the mood. There are soft winds that caress vines dangling from trees. There's gleaming flower pistols and the bees that are attracted to them. Birds calling out to their mates. Jayadev confirms through Radha the truth. That the world is made attractive because of Krishna's manifestations in the world. So Radha yearns for Krishna. But the longing is painful. And yet it is also pleasurable. So this is the, the situation of uh, yearning, that though it's painful, there's great pleasure in it too. The pain of separation 
and the hope of unification. Gleaming saffron flower pistols are golden scepters of love. Trumpet flowers like wanton bees are arrows in love's quiver. When spring's mood is rich, Harry roams here to dance with young women, friend. A cruel time for deserted lovers. So having recalled her friend's confession of love, Radha now turns to the present, with fear and uncertainty strong in her heart. She realizes she has lost Krishna along the way, distracted as he was probably by beauty. Perhaps just like herself who was distracted by remembering what her friend said about love and beauty, perhaps Krishna also was distracted by the beauty of other women. So this sets up the sort of story of the, of the poem, that something happened that Krishna has been lost to Radha. So this is the foundation of the story. He hugs one, he kisses another, he caresses another dark beauty, he stares at one's suggestive smiles, he mimics a willful girl. Harry revels here as the crowd of charming girls revels in seducing him to play.